hit that subscribe button. That way you know exactly when I upload new videos. So before we get going, let me show you exactly where the Hollywood Riviera Beach Club was. The club once stood where today there is Miramar Park. The stairs today that take you down to Burnout parking lot are the original stairs that were used back for the Hollywood Riviera Beach Club. So I'm standing here in front of the new Hollywood Riviera sign. It's pretty cool, huh? Hollywood Riviera is an area located in both Redondo Beach and Torrance at the base of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. So the Hollywood Riviera to me looks like an elephant sitting down. <laughs> kind of cool. It is surrounded by the ocean on one side, you have Valmonte on the other side, then finally you have South Redondo Beach on the other side. Technically, the entire Hollywood Riviera is located in South Torrance. It's a really cool area that many people have no idea it even exists. Most people consider the beach cities to be Redondo, Hermosa, and Manhattan Beach. Well, now you know you can include Hollywood Riviera. Now, the developer of the Hollywood Riviera was a gentleman named Clifford Reed. Clifford Reed got married and on his honeymoon, he took his wife to the French Riviera. And while there, he became inspired by the lifestyle and the architecture and the history and decided that when he returned back to the States, he wanted to find a seaside area to basically replicate what he saw over there in the south of France. So he chose this area, Redondo Beach. He approached Henry Huntington, who owned the land, and they worked out a deal. The ball got rolling, and he decided to call this area Hollywood Riviera, thinking that once he developed this gorgeous beachside community, all these famous people in the movie industry from Hollywood and Beverly Hills. Would come down here and have vacation homes, weekend homes, and permanent residence. One celebrity that did move down here was Rosemary DeCamp. And if you're over 70 years old, you probably know who she is. It's Rosemary again. Mountains of wash every week. Thank you, darling. You're a big help. Used in the wash on your shopping list tonight. Won't you? Thank you, Rosemary DeCamp. I know the girls will take your... The homes to be built in Hollywood Riviera would be Mediterranean style white stucco with red tiled roofs just as reed had seen in the french riviera between 1927 and 1929 about 16 homes were built just east of pch and south of what is now palace verdes boulevard you guys guess what these were behind me this was a john deere factory of the day do you know most of Palos Verdes and Hollywood Riviera, the streets are graded and leveled off by mules? Yeah, there was a big mule farm right above Hollywood Riviera. Mules were reliable, didn't require gas, and each setup, tractor, whatever, was about one, two, three, four, four horsepower, if you know what I mean. A track sales office was built at the corner of Monte de Oro and Palos Verdes Boulevard, which included a large dining hall and lecture hall built behind the office for sales presentations. His literature would read, here, where only a few hundreds may live, thousands will wish to live. So that residents here may fully enjoy 
this mile of wonderful beach. Those coming hereafter will have to pay you a profit. This one explains how easy it is to get to Hollywood Riviera by train, trolley, or auto. The price of a lot was approximately $3,500. Part of his sales presentation was this silent film that was to show off how beautiful the coast was. The sales film ends with something that was very common in Palos Verdes and Hollywood Rivera at the time. It reads, looking inland at the beautiful homes springing up in the Hollywood Rivera, ere long they will be counted by the hundreds. Oh, and by the way, this beautiful beach is private, not subjected to the onslaughts of all races and the outside world. This means you, Asians, Mexicans, Blacks, and Jewish people. All these people who I just listed were allowed to use the club during the day. They were allowed to attend parties. But they were not allowed to purchase a home in the Hollywood Riviera area. Reed's plan to attract movie stars to buy lots was severely impacted by the depression. Also, I'm not a rocket scientist, but when trying to appeal to the Hollywood community, I'm not sure his no Jewish people allowed policy really helped him to achieve that goal. Lucky for us, we get to talk to Marshall Stewart, who is Clifford Reed, the developer of Hollywood Riviera's nephew. How cool is this? When we moved to Southern California and uh, we came down here because my uncle, uh, Clifford F. Reed, who developed Hollywood Riviera, uh, uh, came down here and started in the real estate business down here. and. Uh, he was selling lots in North Hollywood, and uh, then he found this tract of land, this mile square, that uh, became, developed the name Hollywood Riviera. So his company was the developers of the property, and uh, it had been owned by Huntington Land as part of their railroad uh, uh, dedication as for putting in railroads. And so uh, my uncle contracted with them to subdivide and and sell the sell the uh, the, the lots and, and they, so they built a uh, very attractive tract office building there and they built the Hollywood Riviera Beach Club and uh, to attract uh, people to come down and they used to uh, uh, the salesman that worked for him uh, would uh, uh, go around to the hotels and uh, and resorts find people who were out here visiting Southern California and, and, and invite them to come down for the day and uh, take a look at the property. And uh, the original vision was Hollywood Riviera would, would attract, entice uh, people of Hollywood uh, to move down here into a nice environment. And uh, so um, that was uh, uh, the, and so they would bring the people down and uh, give them a day and feed them a lunch and give them a, a lecture of how the great advantages with the seaside community is going to be. And, uh, and so then they would in turn would uh, maybe be interested or not. And of course, it, uh, they'd give them the big pitch and show them all the lots. And uh, uh, that by that time, of course, there was uh, the initial streets were in and uh, some advantages such as underground uh, 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 electricity and, and telephone, which is still uh, a great advantage. And so uh, that uh, came to a uh, slowdown because of the depression. And so for a lot of years, they, there wasn't much moving. But uh, the Riviera Beach Club was, was dedicated to the property owners of the area. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a very interesting building in that Part of it was in Redondo, and part of it was in Torrance. The Torrance line came down uh, uh, to bring, uh, it came up above PV uh, 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 
Boulevard, a straight west, and it went, the line went right straight through the front door of the Hollywood Rivera Beach Club, and of the northerly part was in Redondo, and the southerly part was in Torrance. What's great about that, the club being half in Redondo and half in Torrance, is that there's many stories where at maybe 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock at night, the drinking rules would be different in Redondo than in Torrance. So at 12 o'clock, the party would have to move to another side of the hotel so they would be able to drink for another hour. Kind of cool. And uh, so it had sort of uh, some interesting uh, uh, experiences in, in later years when they put a lot of parties gone down there uh, that were they had to move because of the um, they couldn't have certain parties after certain hours in one city, so they had to move to another part of the building. But uh... let's listen to Todd Snellgrove, who I think is so funny. Uh, tell a personal story about working at Hollywood Riviera Beach Club. <laughs> In those days, this, I got another job through Mr. Stewart. The Hollywood Development Company was operated by a man named Clifford Reed, who developed Hollywood Riviera in those early days. The interesting thing about the <coughs> Hollywood Riviera Beach Club now it's since burned down and it's no longer in evidence, but it was a pretty nice place. And the, the boundary line between Redondo Beach and Torrance went right down the middle of the building. And so there was a lot of uh, problems with authority. You know, if there was a, if there was a, a, a police matter, uh, who would do what to whom, <laughs> or or a fire matter. And so I had a hat check concession there. And so I got to witness all this stuff, you know, because they would come and check, and then they would play, and then they would come and leave. And so the, the one of the, <coughs> one of the incidents, the, Somebody ran into place and put on a stag, and they had these naked women entertainers, and uh, and so the, the I don't know I don't remember which jurisdiction it was, but Redondo or Torrance, but one of them didn't show, and the other one went to the to the other city and watch the show. <laughs> so they weren't, they weren't uh, in their own city, so they didn't have any authority. <laughs> um, I, in essence, almost grew up there because my dad and my mother was involved to some degree of, of running the place, of managing it for uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the association for uh, uh, all through the, the 30s, 1930 to 1942. So it was a marvelous experience for a bunch of growing kids down there to have a swimming pool of a uh, uh, 75 foot swimming pool to swim in any time I wanted to and a marvelous beach and a locale that was, uh, couldn't be better. To the, the, the beach club, it was, uh, it was quite active uh, and uh, the, uh, it got a lot of uh, parties from uh, sororities and, and uh, fraternities and from the various uh, 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 colleges around and and high school parties too it also the uh, uh, the uh, Redondo Rotary Club used to meet there as well as the uh, 2030 club which was a young men's uh, group and also the sandpipers used to uh, com uh, come for lunches and parties there and sandpipers is still existence in the in the South Bay so uh, uh, the place was, was very uh, well used for uh, uh, throughout the years that uh, when I was growing up there. Um, officially Redondo, but Redondo uh, uh, had annexed uh, about a quarter of Hollywood Riviera uh, and, uh, and somewhere in the past. I never did, uh, I've never been able to find out the exact date that that happened, but Redondo annexed that much and then Torrance 
realized that they were going, weren't going to have any beach or any uh, ocean front, so they annexed the rest of it. So uh, back then there was nothing there. Uh, in uh, the early uh, uh, area, there was a, a, a hot dog hamburger stand that was on Avenue I, and uh, and and then across from it was a uh, uh, was one uh, uh, small uh, apartment house that was built. But there was nothing in uh, in the you might say the Redondo area of uh, of the uh, of the Hollywood Riviera. The uh, there was no. Uh, uh, Riviera Village, there was uh, streets, and that was it, and uh, one gas station, and... Okay guys, that's part one of Hollywood Riviera and the Hollywood Riviera Beach Club. Obviously, you have to click this video to see part two. Click, 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 click this video. Hope you like it. Obviously, you have to click this video to see part two. Click, 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 click this video. Hope you like it.